the Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. This is the Financial Survival Network. Financial Survival Network is presented to you by Regal Assets. Buy and sell physical gold and silver through your existing retirement plan, 100% tax-free with Regal Assets. If you want to include physical gold or silver in your existing IRA or old 401k, request your free investment kit, which was recently featured in the Forbes and Smart Money Wall Street Journal magazines. Call toll-free 855-678-6620, 855-678-6620, or visit regalassets.com. Today, I've got a special guest. Gerald Salente, you've seen him all over the place, Trends Research Institute. He's been making forecasts about the economy, about societal trends, and so much more. He's been spot on about this economy. And now we're approaching a new phase of the economic collapse that started back in 2007. And Gerald's on to talk about what he sees happening next. Gerald, welcome to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Well, thanks for having me, Kerry. It's great to have you. And we really, we've really we been following your predictions, your projections for many, many years. And you seem to have a knack for picking up on the trend. What's the key to recognizing a trend for the people who don't have the experience that you do? Well, one of them is I'm a political atheist. I don't I don't believe in anybody's political gods or political religions. I mean, it's just, you know, kid stuff to me. And um so that what happens is when people call themselves Republicans, Democrats, conservatives, liberals, they they put themselves in a box. They have a fixed ideology. So they're looking at things the way they want them to be rather than what they are. So I just give a diagnosis. And I read, you know, continually. Uh, I read international, national news, you know, every day. And but not only in terms of the uh, international, in terms of economics, but environmental, business, consumer, social. Always making connections between different fields, geopolitical. So it's 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 very different than just being an economic forecaster or looking at politics or anything else in that I say that opportunity misses those who view the world through the eyes of their profession. And most people have desk vision. That's all they see is from behind their desk out. And so that's what really makes us different. And again, I've been at this for 32 years. You know, I'm not the same trend forecaster I was when I began. You know, you, you keep refining your talents like a, any good musician or any good artist to practice every day and i practice every day yeah absolutely uh, as do we here and of all the years the 30 years you've been doing it what's the forecast that you feel the most proud of and that you feel was really way way ahead of everybody else out there caught everybody else flat-footed well there are a number of them uh and I wouldn't say proud, but you know, I'm pleased that I, I saw them in the sense that you know, I, I predicted the uh, 1987 stock market crash in January of '87. I said it was going to crash that year. Nobody was saying that. No one, no one, no one, virtually that I know of. And you know, from gourmet coffees, I was I was talking about that in the mid '80s when people were still drinking stuff that called Sanka that was out of a package, <laughs> and and Taster's Choice. And everybody was talking about the Taster's Choice commercials and water being a big business back again in the 80s, you know, when, when virtually no one was doing it. Years and years and decades probably before uh, Pepsi or Coca-Cola got into the business. And, and so those kind of things, as well as, I guess, the, the most um, damaging forecast that I ever made was when I had... It was interesting. You could go to our website, trendsjournal.com, go to the forecast page, and there it is. You know, I forecast that Americans wouldn't be safe at home or abroad uh, on, um, in, in 2011, and that I've been writing about terrorist strikes. I know some people think it's an inside job. I don't know. I don't, I don't discount it. I, you know, the government uh, will kill its people willingly, as they do sending them off to wars that they can't win. So, you know, I, I don't put anything past them. 
But what happened was USA Today ran a big story on it. And then when 9-11 happened, uh, you know, it got flooded by the media, you know, Financial Times, New York Times, you name it, CNN, everybody. How did you know this? How did you know this was going to happen? I said, I've been writing about it for years. It's called foreign policy. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah. They hate our freedom and liberty. How dare you say that? That, that almost cost me my career. Mm-hmm. I, got, I used to be on Oprah, the Today Show, CNN, all of them. USA Today used to run my top trends every year. No more. No more. You're either with us or you're with the terrorists. <laughs> and, and look at Americans. You know, look, look, look what happened. They, I, I, then they asked me to forecast what would happen with the Afghan war. All right, so that's an easy one. If Alexander the Great couldn't pull it off, if the British and Russians couldn't pull it off, what makes you think the Americans are going to pull it off? It's going to be a long, drawn-out war. The only thing it will accomplish is killing a lot of people, both on our side and their side, and squandering bill, hundreds of billions, if not trillions of dollars. And I said the same thing for the Iraq war. Oh, you want to know how unpopular I was then? It's mm-hmm. disgusting, the immorality in this country, how people could still tolerate this. They're, what, you'll pick up the New York Times today. They have five pages of dead guys from the Afghan war, a losing battle. And, what, what, what they, they, and now the people that we're training are killing our soldiers and hardly a peep. And all of these politicians out there, the Romneys, the Ryans, the Obamas, the Bidens, Nobody's saying cut back on the military. You want to balance the budget? Hey, how about trying that one? Let me get this really straight. So somebody, if they have, if they have attention deficit disorder, this may kick it back into order. The United States military has not won a major battle since World War II. And they always make excuses why they lose. I'll tell you why they lose. Because they got a bunch of losers running the show. And they have a bunch of psychopaths called politicians that keep sending our men and women to get killed. So you want to balance the budget. Why don't you listen to what Eisenhower said? The military-industrial complex is taking over the country. So why do I see things that people see that, they, that others don't? Because I say what I believe, and I speak with the facts. I don't wave flags. I don't believe in my country right or wrong, my president right or wrong. My father right or wrong, my brother's right or wrong, or myself right or wrong. Because whether it's Jesus, Muhammad, or Buddha, the Koran or the Bible, there is no salvation for the hypocrite. Yeah, I know. It's, it's really frustrating because the country was founded on ideals, and our founding fathers believed in something. And for a good hundred years or so, the country stood for something. And now... We are this listless, declining civilization that can't figure out uh, where to go, what to do, and how to turn things around. And people actually have faith in their government, even at this point, which is something that totally befuddles me. After the things that you've mentioned, and there's a long, long list of all the blunders and the costly things that have been done, and the freedoms that have been lost. How can anybody in this day and age, Gerald, believe that your government is out there to protect you and has your best interest at heart? Because the people, look what they've become. Look what they look like. We're the most obese country in the world. Believe the government? They believe McDonald's is food. (laughs) They believe Dunkin's is selling donuts. Oh, God. I mean, come on. What, are you kidding? Look what it looks like. I mean, it's like the whales are all beached. How did this country get to look? Look the way people dress. Look at how they behave. Listen to the music. Mm -hmm. Go to the movies. Everything is a cartoon. Everything is out of a comic book. The nation's become a comic book. You got a comic book president. You got a comic book vice president. You have two freaks that want to be president in Romney and Ryan. You know, I always say this, that the people that become politicians are the same people that you couldn't stand in high school and college that wanted to be class president and head of the student council. Boy, you couldn't have gotten a better clown than, than Ryan. Do you know he was voted by his classmates, high school kids, that are apparently a lot smarter than adults today, 
as being brown noser of the year. <laughs> That's all they are. That's all these people ever. You knew them in school. The brown noses, glad handers, suck ups, bow downs, overly ambitious and insincere. Vote for me. Yeah, it's, it's really distressing. And, you know, you've made that observation before. I've heard you mention it where you dust off the pictures of your parents, your grandparents. And when there was a family event or even just Sunday, they were dressed to the nines and they looked impeccable. And I know for myself, I do like to dress up even still, but there's a trend of just dressing down to the lowest common denominator and just go to any mall or any public gathering. And I don't know how you feel about the body art. To me, you know, maybe maybe a tattoo here or there in a private area, but they become veritable billboards. It really is distressing to see how the appearance of the American public has declined. And then I was in Vegas, and there was a group of Chinese tourists, and I wouldn't say they were dressed spectacularly well, but they were all neat, well-kept, well-groomed. And I said, yeah, this this is the difference. I'm seeing it right here that – this is just a reflection of the deterioration of our, our culture and our country. I know. I, I can't figure it out. I mean, I agree with you with all these, these tattoos. It's like reading the funny papers. <laughs> you know, you know, but again, I don't know why. You know, I don't know why. But what I am saying is it's beyond that. It, it, that's part of it. You know, I don't understand it, how people could have no dignity, respect. The people come to work here, they, they, everyone gets dressed nicely. It's it's so nice to see, and 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 then I I look outside, and I can't believe the way people show up in public. But again, it's all it's it's all tied together. So when we're talking about how can they vote for, how could people believe the presidential reality show? <laughs> you know, is this Obama ever work? The cat's always out there with his sleeve rolled up, and I'm tired of hearing folks. Hey folks, hey folk, you. I've heard enough of this folk stuff. Yeah. Everybody's a folk. You know, folks. And people buy the crap. Again, look what they eat. Look what they drink. They drink. They actually think diet soda helps them lose weight. Yeah, keep pumping that aspartame in your brain. Hey, wonder why people are getting Alzheimer's disease. It couldn't be that crap on buttered popcorn that the people that even produce it in, in, the, in the plants are losing their minds and showing that it's, it has an effect on you. Couldn't be all those chemicals. That's the other thing. Is there global warming? Is there climate change? I don't know. But here's what I know. I know that if you t- pump in trillions trillions of gallons and tons of toxins into the water, into the air, and into the food, it's not going to be good for you. Yeah. It's going to kill you. Yeah. I don't need a scientific study. I don't need some wanker from Kellogg or, or Coke telling me that the crap of an artificial this and that doesn't hurt anybody. I'm sick of it. Oh, and you want to know what else is wrong with America? Hey, you kid out of line, shove some Ritalin down his throat. That'll put him in place. Oh, you're depressed? Give him some antidepressants. Hey, you got a little pain? Take some drugs. Nah, don't worry about your diet. Nah, don't do any exercise. Take the drugs. Have the side effects. You may lose your liver. You might go blind and deaf. You'll never be able to pee again. But take it. It'll be good for you. You'll be happy. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? But so what is the average person to do? You see this decline. It doesn't look like uh, there's many countries that you could actually leave this one and be safe at. When this ultimate collapse comes, which you've been predicting for a while, and I totally agree with you about, what is Joe Sixpack, who's now Joe Twopack, because he can't afford a six-pack, what should he do? If you've got 10000 do you just buy gold? Do you buy food? What should you be doing, Gerald? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm not permitted to give financial advice. I'll only tell you so, what I do. Yeah, for and I've had my ups and downs, just to make this really clear. Like the you know, I'm, I'm, a guy from, <laughs> I'm a guy from the, you know, born in the Bronx and social climb to Yonkers. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, and so what, I, what I, I do for myself is I've been buying gold since 1978. And a good friend of mine buys gold and silver every month, whatever he could afford. 
And I think that's a real sound strategy that he does. As for the food issue, you know, I, I have, you know, several weeks. If it becomes longer than that, you know, I'm getting out of here. I don't want to be in a country where, where I have to live like that. And where do you go? You don't go anywhere. That's what I wrote in this last Trends Journal. I came back from Germany. I've been haunted by it since. Oh, really? uh, Berlin was b more beautiful than Paris, grander than Paris, the way I saw it before it was bombed out. And I'm saying, how could the Germans, you know, of all people, you know, when you look over their history of greatness, you know, from Bach, Beethoven, Goethe, Wagner, I mean, you know, Einstein, even, you know, Fritz Lang, Marlene Dietrich, these proud, strong, educated people, how could they let a two-bit freak destroy their country? And they were, oh, after the Treaty of Versailles, no, 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 I'm Italian descent. Look at our, you know, look at our heritage, you know, not for nothing, you know, Michelangelo, Da Vinci, Puccini, sure. Rossini, you know, and we eat better than the Germans, you know, how could they let a two-bit freak, a cartoon character like Mussolini destroy them? So I came back to the United States, and there was a building for sale right near our building on the most historic four corners in the United States, the only place where there's a pre-revolutionary stone building on each corner. And I said, I'm going to buy it, because you can't run away from the freaks. And it was a 1750s building, uh, the Franz Rogan House, F-R-A-N-Z-R-O-G-G-E-N. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm making my stand here. You can't run away. There are freaks everywhere. We got them here. You want to see two-bit freaks? How about Bush and Cheney? Yeah, I mean, Marvel comic books could not have come up with a better character than Dick Cheney and, 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 or, and Dell for, for a dumb Bush. And they take you to war for fake reasons, and they get away with it. You want to see two-bit freaks? Turn on the presidential reality show. So I said to myself, we have to make the change happen here. In a revolution of the heart and the mind, not one of bullets and, and armies, because everybody loses in that one. Sure. And, and that's what they want. They want violence, so then they have an excuse to put it down. So to me, the spirit has to change. The individuals have to change. We talked about health. You know, I have a, by the way, I have an honorary doctorate from the National University of Health Sciences in Complementary Medicine. One of the first books I worked on in the 80s was Natural Healing. So there's this wonderful saying, when the student's ready, the teacher appears. When the people get ready, the leaders will appear. But the people have to get ready emotionally, physically, spiritually, as I see it. I don't tell anybody what to believe. That's the way I see it. Because this thing is collapsing. So what do you do? You get yourself in shape. Start, be, start doing smart things. You know, the summer's almost over. Next summer, make sure that you rip up that useless grass that, that you can't smoke or eat and, <laughs> and plant something good in it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, you know, that's a good that, point. Yeah, you know, do, do something. I can't say smoke. Oh, no, no, that's against the law. Don't do that. Yeah. You know, sell them, sell them all the painkillers you want. Get them hooked on those. But, hey. You know, yeah, that's, that's okay. Prescription, yeah. prescription drugs, being a pres prescription drug addict, nothing wrong with that. But God nothing forbid. wrong with that. That that enriches big pharma. <laughs> yeah, you know, but but Another not the little pharma. Huh? So anyway, do things to be self sufficient. Right. Don't buy anything you don't need. When you do buy it, my motto is not made in China. I don't buy anything I can not made in China. I try to I buy everything I can locally. I, yeah, you can't, I break the chains is my motto. Don't go to the chains. Because if you do go to the chain stores, you're chained to them. And you become chained as their slave. I'm old enough to remember. I mean, maybe most people don't remember this time. But people used to own shops. Dress shops. Men's shops. Dishware. All little kind of shops. Before the greedy pigs took over. It's fascism in America, the merger of state and corporate powers. I'm not a libertarian. I believe in laws. There were laws in place, the robinson Patman Act, Sherman Antitrust Act, Clayton Act, that were put in place so the big greedy pigs like Walmart and Target and all of the rest couldn't take over all the business and make you a clerk to work for them, to become a, a paid slave. It's a plantation economy, but it's better than the plantation because they don't have to worry about housing you or feeding you. They just give you enough so you can get the hell out of there after you do your job and then come back the next day. Yeah. So we have to go back to when America was great, a renaissance. 
That, to me, is the answer. Do you think that that's possible, though, at this point? Have we gone too far down the rat hole that there's there's no way back? Or are we all just being a little too cynical and failing to really recognize history that, you know, things can get bad, but then they can get better again? Again, it's up to the individual. You want to talk about a bad time going down the rat hole? How about the rats that, that they say uh, were the cause of the uh, Black Plague in in, uh, in Europe when an estimated 60% of the Europeans were killed yeah. you know, from, the bubon- from the plague? Mm-hmm. What followed it? Yeah, the, the Renaissance. Renaissance. Yeah, so... And the Renaissance followed it because people were hip enough to understand, hey, what we're doing good isn't, what we're doing now isn't working. Let's go back to the past. Renaissance. Ale Romana e alla Antica. In the manner of the Romans and the ancients. That's what the Italians said during the Renaissance of Florence to describe the quality of their work. Go back to quality rather than quantity and everyday low prices. <laughs> yeah, that's somebody's uh, advertising slogan. I guess it's Walmart. Um, so, and we do have the internet now. We can't downplay that because you're out there, you know, millions of people are listening, literally gobbling up every word that you speak in the Trends Journal and your numerous media appearances such as this. I'm out there and I'm not nearly reaching as many people as you. Maybe there's 50,000 people who listen to me in a month, but there's thousands of people just like you and me out there trying to lead this renaissance. I'm just afraid that these people are too numbed and they're too into Roman idol. The only difference between uh, reality TV now and Romans at the Colosseum is that the losers nowadays, they just get humiliated. They don't get fed to the lions, right? Well, again, you know, it, it, you, you're never going to get everyone. And so my belief is 20%. If 20% change, everything changes. That's it. And I believe there are 20%. I know a lot of people, and I know a lot of great, wonderful, kind, generous uh, people and who can't stand what's going on. So I believe that there's an opportunity for it. But, you know, the odds are against it. If if um, the people don't find the courage, the dignity, the respect, and the integrity within themselves and the passion to do it. So that's my message is, you know, find the greatness within yourself because when enough people find it, they don't tolerate crap from others. Yeah, and I want to emphasize that, Gerald. You bring out a great point. Every person out there has something, what one author termed an unfair advantage. Their ability where they excel beyond everyone else in the human race or most people. And we've lost track of that because we've become so dependent and so, so just given up faith in ourselves that we've forgotten that greatness really emanates from the individual out to society and government, not the other way, right? And we've been led to believe that government is the cure to whatever ails us and we have to get beyond that, right? You got it. You, what you said, I'm going to use that phrase that you got from an author, unfair advantage. Each one of us has it. Use it. Yeah. And uh, that's what, that'll make the difference. You know, if you don't find, if you don't create your future the way you want, someone else is going to do it for you, and you're not going to like it. Okay. And I'm going to use that one as well. If you don't create your future, if you just live by default and allow other people to control what you think and what you do, then you're not really living. You're dead already, and you don't even know it. And that's the sin, because you've given up all that potential that you had. Gerald, I can't thank you enough for coming on. It's really been fun. And for people looking to find out about you and uh, Trends Journal, where's the uh, proper web address? Oh, TrendsJournal.com, TrendsJournal.com. And, Terry, we know people are having a difficult time uh, you know, so we have a discount request page there. Uh, just, just fill it out. No private information. Just tell us, you know, your situation. And we try to make the Trends Journal available to everyone because we want them to prepare for the future so that they can profit, survive, and thrive. And rather than you know going down with the ship because this thing isn't, this is not going to turn around. Uh, that, not by the government making it happen. That's for sure. The only thing it's going to get much, much worse. 
and particularly just an imparting word, watch September 12th, day after September 11th. Everybody remember that. Uh, see what the Germans do and how they vote on whether or not they're going to permit the, the German uh, people from staying and continuing to uh, put funds into the bailout schemes and the stability packages. So that's a big one to watch because if the, the Supreme Court says that they can't, that may be the end of the euro, and there's going to be great global destabilization should that occur. So thank you very much hey. for having me, and continue to do the great work you are. And you too as well. We'll have you on again. Just quickly, one last prog prognostication. The greater depression that we're in now, how many more years, in your opinion, does it go on for? Well, it, it's... Uh... The bad news is that the only way it's going to end is when they take us to war, and unfortunately, that's the way the timetable looks like, just like the last one, Great Depression. Crash of 29, uh, Depression, currency wars, trade wars, world wars, same scenarios playing over. That's why people really have to get engaged and involved, because they're ready to take us to another war. The Middle East is going to explode. If it does, and they attack Iran, it's the beginning of World War Three. So you won't have to worry about your money. You'll be worried about your life. Yeah. Okay, okay take All care right. now. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Be well. Bye.